So an ideal gearhead satisfies the relation that the power coming out of the gearhead is equal to the power that we put in from the motor. And we saw that this implies that the output velocity is equal to the input velocity divided by the gear ratio. And the output torque is equal to the input torque multiplied by the gear ratio. But in practice, we don't have a pure power preservation. When the teeth of the gear, gears are meshing, there's some friction and impact between the teeth. And so we lose some power there. So in fact, a practical model of a motor could look like the output power is equal to some efficiency factor times the input power, where eta here is less than 1. If eta is equal to 1, then we have the ideal case, but typically it's less than 1. Now, the teeth themselves satisfy or enforce the relationship, the kinematic relationship that the output has to satisfy, or has to be the input velocity divided by a g. But we don't have anything that enforces this relationship. So what this implies is that, in fact, our output torque is equal to this efficiency coefficient times g times the input torque. So we have some loss in torque uh, due to the practical friction effects. So if we took our original speed torque curve of the motor, So here's the no load speed and the stall torque. And we had an ideal gear head. Then we would get an output relation or a uh, speed torque curve at the output of the gear head that looks like this. So we re reduce the maximum speed by a factor of g, and we've increased the maximum torque by a factor of g. But due to this efficiency factor, the actual output would look something like this, where this is eta times g times the stall torque of the motor.